Okay, calling to, to order the regular meeting of the Ojai Historic Preservation Commission. Uh, today is Thursday, July 14th, 2022. It is 5.07. Okay, roll call please, Mara. Or Brian. Chair Aikens. Yes, here. Vice Chair Convery. Here. Commissioner James. Here. Commissioner McCatton. Here. Commissioner Prevor. Here. Great. Thank you all for being here. If you'd uh, stand with me for the Pledge of Allegiance. Remove your hat, sir. There we go. <coughs> pledge of Allegiance. Uh, right hand over your heart. I pledge of allegiance to the flag. To the flag, flag of, of the United States, United States, United States of, America. of America. And to the republic, republic for which it stands. Which it stands. One nation, nation under God, God indivisible, indivisible, with liberty, and, liberty justice. and justice for all. There we go. Can I um, please um, remind the commissioners to turn off your mics unless you're speaking? Thank you. Excellent. Thank you, Mara. Okay. Uh, this time, selection of Historic Preservation Commission chairperson and vice chair. And so we will turn the time over to. Uh, Mara Macaluso, who is our representative from the Community Development Department this morning, or this afternoon, and I guess our liaison. So the, um, thank you. Thank You're you, Commissioner welcome. Aikens and, and Commissioners, or Chair Aikens, sorry. Um, so the nomination of the um, new chairperson is this evening, and my understanding is that you are going to be discussing this, oh, just a second. You're talking about a new um, a new chair, chair for your and seat. Vice chair. Yes. I'm going to assist in the procedure of nominating and selecting a chair, and the following rules have been established. The nomination and elect or election of the next chair is going to be conducted by nomination and then motion, and then as set forth below. Once the next chair has been selected by the Historic Preservation Commission, the new chair then presides over and conducts and conducts the remainder of the meeting's agenda. So the liaison will ask for nominations. Okay. Well, let's do it one at a time, please. Ryan Aiken for chair. I second that. And then Brian can take a vote, please. Yes. Are you asking me to vote? You, no, are you I was going asking, I'm sorry, I was asking Brian to take a oh, vote this of Brian, the commissioners. Sorry. <laughs> sorry, you're Brian too. <laughs> Brian Popovich. Yeah. Okay, Aikens? Sorry. Yes. Convery? Yes. James? Yes. McCathan? Yes. And Prebor. You can turn on your mic, please, um, Commissioner Prebor. Yes. Thank you. Great. Thank you all. My wife's not so sure about and that. And then if anybody wants to make a, um, <laughs> I, a motion regarding I'd like to make a motion. I'd like to make a motion to um, continue with uh, Cindy Convery for vice chair. I'll second that. I'll second that as well. <laughs> Please take a vote, Brian Popovich. Okay. Aikens? Yes. Convery? Yes. James? Yes. Manhattan? Yes. And Prebor again? Yes. Well, thank you, Cindy, for continuing. Appreciate that. Well, and thank you. And so no one has to change seats. We can, um, <laughs> like, literally. Onward we go. <laughs> yes. And thank you all. We're looking forward to uh, this upcoming year. Uh, let's see. Back to me, public communications. Public communications is the time set aside during the Historic Preservation Commission meeting for the members of the public to address the Historic Preservation Commission on items of city business other than scheduled agenda items. Matters raised at this time may be briefly discussed by the commission and will generally be referred to staff and or placed on a subsequent agenda. Under state law, other than for emergency items, no action can be taken at this meeting. So Brian, do we have any people on 
Uh, well, let me ask now. So we have some folks who are visiting. Are you, do we have any speaker cards for public communications? Brian? No speaker cards, but one hand raised and online. Okay, so we have someone online. Then if you'd please uh, bring them on. Actually two online now with their hands raised. Should I go ahead? Uh, yes. I, uh, my name is Craig Walker. Um, I live at 1160 Lake Avenue in Miramani. And uh, I attended the city council meeting last Tuesday where they discussed the uh, development agreement for the cottages among the flowers and the uh, Mallory Way property among, two, among the four properties. And those two properties, the Mallory Way and the uh, Cottages Among the Flowers have both been uh, judged by a historic consultant to be eligible for uh, the California Register of Historic Places and the National Register, which make them historic resources for the city of Ojai, and they are also eligible for landmarking. And during the discussion, it came up that uh, under without any protections, which they don't have at this time, the owners would be able to bulldoze them at their discretion without uh, consulting or having it reviewed by the Historic Preservation Commission. Also, uh, they can be, I guess, allowed to uh, continue with uh, their, their demolition by neglect. That was an issue that came up that the owners have neglected the properties and they are slowly deteriorating over the last 20 years. And so I would like to put it before the HPC to recommend to the council that they be made structures of merit, which is under your historic preservation code. And that would just give them the simple protection of one, not being able to be dem demolished without a review by the HPC. And second, that they would not be allowed to uh, continue with the demolition by neglect if the city finds that that has has been happening. So I put that before you and I hope you'll put that on your next agenda. I know you don't have any. There were several 30 some that were uh, determined by the HPC several years ago, but the council has never approved those. But I think these should be moved. Uh, they're not on the original list, but I think they should be moved. Uh, to an emergency action so that we can be assured that those properties will not be de demolished without review by this body and also uh, will be at least monitored for demolition by neglect. Thank you. Great, thank you, Craig Walker. Um, next, Brian. Uh, hello, my name's Jane Carroll. I, I may be speaking at the mo wrong moment here. I am the owner's agent for the George Washington Smith House on 701 Foothill. Uh, that would be at the wrong time then, Jane. Sorry. Bye. Uh, so we will call you back for uh, public hearing item number three. Thank you. Okay, Brian, so if you can, so we'll bring her back for that item since she's speaking specifically on that. Uh, and you understand that the uh, opening public comments is for comment on anything that's not directly on the agenda, Jane. Okay, uh, are there no other public communications, Brian? No, that was it. Okay, then we'll close public communications. Um, Museum report, uh, we'll give that uh, later in the afternoon or later in the meeting. I don't have that at this moment. So at this time, we'll move to consent items, uh, the minutes of June 9th, 2022. Again, this is item number two. Yeah, I don't have any changes or any additions. I don't either. Anyone? So I'll, I'll make a motion to approve the minutes if no one has anything. I'll second that. Uh, oh, you got stuff. Yeah, nope, I, I thought I had something, but I don't. 
Okay, so uh, if we could call for a vote, please, Mara. Aikens. Oh, Brian, sorry. Aikens? Yes, please. Convery? Yes. James? Yes. McHatton? Yes. And Prevor? Yes. Okay, great. Thank you. Okay, we will move on then to, uh, let's see. Next item, item number two. Uh, disclosure of, this disclosure is of site yes, visits. Yes, thank you. Mm -hmm. Try to flip by here. Okay, very important tonight. So the next item is dis disclosure of site visits and ex parte con contacts. Again, disclosure by commissioners of site visits. Any uh, personal or direct contacts with any of the uh, those people involved. So if you have any of these, if you would please disclose. Uh, no, I don't. No. No, I don't. No, I don't. I don't either. Okay, I will uh, tell you that uh, earlier this year there was someone that expressed uh, concern about uh, something going on at 701 Foothill. So I did go and uh, take, uh, did visit the property, uh, walk around the perimeter there, and uh, uh, that was a few months ago, and did not talk to any of the owners. Uh, didn't see any any owners, so that's where I am. Okay, now we will move to public hearing number three, and uh, go to a staff report. Mara, thank you, Chair Aikens and commissioners. Uh, this is work permit twenty two dash zero zero three, and it's um it's rather extensive, so just bear with me. Um, in 2010, the City Council designated the George, Wa George Washington Smith Spec House, <coughs> letter A, and property, and that's at 701 Foothill Road as a City of Ojai Historic Landmark, number 16, and a Mills Act agreement was entered into between the City and the property owners also in 2010. The Mills Act agreement provides conditions that the property owners preserve specific features, including those that characterize the Spanish Revival architecture style of this structure. Also associated with the Mills Act agreement is a 10-year plan, including specific improvements the applicant has agreed to make as part of maintaining the historic landmark. For the most part, um, the year 2022 of that plan includes the, spoke, uh, the um, current scope of work that's provided here, or that's being proposed here today. These items are replacing the kitchen counters and stove, repairing kitchen cabinets, installing new flooring in the master bedroom, renovating the master bathroom, including the new flooring, new tub, shower, sink, and installing a new gate at the vehicular access on El Toro Road. The proposed items that are not part of the 10-year plan that are proposed today include new flooring on the deck that's adjacent to the master bedroom and construction of an outdoor kitchen. The community development staff recently was recently made fair, um, aware of construction activity that's occurring on the site right now, and the project representative indicated that IKEA storage units are being installed in the garage and planter boxes are being installed in the garden and these two items are not in conflict with the historic designated features. Um, the specific historic features to be maintained and not altered um, without benefit of a historic um, resources report include interior features in the living room and exterior features of the main entrance and the tiled fountain and surrounding brick walkway and stone wall. And these um, objects of record are not being affected by the current proposal. The proposed interior modifications um, are not intended to alter those the features, as I just said. The replacement gate at the vehicular entrance and proposed outdoor kitchen are not, um, also do not alter protected features. However, there is an outdoor iron gate for pedestrian access and the vehicular entrance gate to be replaced, is to be replaced with wood where it used to be iron and the commission may want to discuss, um, consider requiring a replacement gate that complements the existing one, the pedestrian one. Regarding the outdoor kitchen, it's not going to interfere with existing protected features either. However, it's a substantial addition to the property and therefore deserves the commission's um, scrutiny. 
and all the details of that um, element are on the plans and in the report and of course I am here and the applicant is here for any questions. Um, so that was an overview of what's happening on the site and a bit of the history. The specific details include replacement of a broken kitchen range with a tra traditional style range, repair of existing cabinets and installation of new countertops, this is all in the kitchen, the existing range which appears to be an antique, um, the one that is being replaced and I believe has been replaced because it wasn't working, um, has had multiple burners, it's butter yellow in color, it's really pretty, um, so the sides open, has latching oven doors and a gas stove top with burners and a built-in skillet. The proposed replacement range is um, presented in black with two downward opening oven doors and a multiple burner stovetop, including a built-in skillet. And the oven is an this oven is an antique replica. Um, pictures of which are in your um, packet. The cabinets are proposed to be repaired and maintained, while the countertops are proposed to be replaced. The existing countertops are a brown stone and they're to be replaced with a white pearl quartzite with various shades of gray and other webs of, of color running through them. The master bedroom, bathroom, and deck. The master bedroom um, currently has a light colored oak floor that's proposed to be replaced with a wide plank um, hickory flooring and that hickory flooring is proposed to be continued through the master uh, through to the master bathroom replacing the modern tile that's been installed in the bathroom. Along with replacing the flooring in that uh, master bathroom is proposed replacement sink, tub, and shower tiling. There are currently two separate vanities, each with a dark stone counter and white porcelain basin. These are to be replaced with one vanity instead of two. Um, that includes a white gray marble top. The existing tub is a modern jacuzzi tub set in a tiled decking, and the proposal is to remove all of that decking and install a standalone cast iron tub. The shower is currently tiled to match the tub deck. The tower shower tile is proposed to be replaced with a dark gray and white marble. The master bedroom opens up to an existing deck, and the floor in the deck is concrete, and it is proposed to, to be replaced with a floating um, planks that are that look like wood. Um, the, outdoor, the outdoor kitchen that's proposed is an L-shaped stucco unit with countertops ranging in height from 5 feet and 10 inches. Uh, I'm sorry, ranging in heights, ranging in different heights. But there is also a 5 foot 10 inch high precast concrete gas fireplace. Um, the texture and color of the stucco is proposed to match the existing uh, stucco on the residence. So I want to repeat that there are no alterations to the proposed um, protected features under the Mills Act. Um, the improvements are, however, included, are, that are included in the 10-year plan and listed in the um, Mills Act agreement. Of course, we're recommending approval of those. And those, the improvements are inclusive of materials and style that will return specific features of the interior that have been modified over time to the original style and error of the house. Um, the addition of the outdoor kitchen is extensive and although, as I said before, does not disturb the protected features listed in the um, Historic Resources Report, um, is a significant um, element that's being proposed and should be scrutinized by the Commission. And with that, I am available for questions and we do have Jane Carroll here online uh, virtually who is the um, uh, representative for the project. Great. Thank you, Mara. Um, as for upcoming speakers, will, will we hear, should we hear from Jane first and then take questions and then take pub public comment and questions? Is that how we proceed? I believe at this time you'll want to ask um, if you have any questions of staff. Right. Um, and if you don't, then we can ask for um, any kind of statement by the applicant. By Jane. Okay. Thank you. Um, so a couple questions I have, uh, just general stuff. Um, we, the, um, the document keeps referring to the Mills Act, uh, that these adjustments are included in the Mills Act and the Mills Act uh, layout was dated 2022. Was there a Mills Act that went be, 
I'm, there must have been one in 2010, I would yes. think. The, the Mills Act includes a 10-year plan, right? and at the end of that 10-year plan, the applicant or the property owner is required to renew it. So every 10 years, we get a list of improvements that they're um, proposing for, those, for that 10-year period. Okay. And that, in order to maintain the, the integrity of the structure. Okay, that makes sense to me. So there was a, it was a landmark in 2010. There would have been, if it was Mills Act, right, right away. Even I wasn't here then. Um, so that would have gone 10 years to 2020. Uh, you would think that there was another one. I'm just curious on how we have a Mills Act that starts in 2022. And Can I uh, speak to this? Oh, sure. The, it was Mills Act, I believe, in 2015 by Thais and Bob Quinn. It was already a oh, that's when they moved in? Yeah, they, well, that's oh. when they decided to Mills Act. I think they moved in maybe a year or two before that. They bought it from Debbie Curry. So, so the Mills Act did not start when the landmark was no. made in 2010. No. The Mills That's Act, the Mills Act came later. Thank you. It's a oh. separate process. Okay, and so, th so this, the 2022 is essentially what they're doing is new owner, new Mills Act schedule, yeah. uh, based on the new owner's perception rather than being hampered by by uh, yeah. the previous owner's Mills Act. That's correct. Okay, that makes sense. It's not. It won't expire until 2025, approximately. I'm not sure of the date that they did it, but I think the new owner can um, submit the changes that they want to make going forward during the during the time period. You know, assuming that they're going to renew it, which is what it looks like on here, just kind of giving us a heads up about what's coming as a courtesy. That's how I see it. Okay, nope, that makes perfect sense to me. Okay, on uh, page two of five, it says on July 5th, 2022, community development staff was made aware of construction activity occurring on the site. Uh, based on uh, requests I heard, uh, I actually have an email to Lucas going back to January 5th of this year, which is when some activity was going on outside the building and there was a chute coming down from the upstairs to a trash been that was visible from that exterior so uh, I mean the, the current what, what's written about in the staff report is a call that just came in last week or, or the week prior um, so my re and I'm, I'm just going to go by my recollection about what you're talking about from the further in the past um, our understanding is that what was going on was in the garage or guest house which is not part of the landmark uh, yes, the majority of it was in the garage area, um, but there were other areas that were. Uh, again, I, I don't know the interior. I didn't go in the interior. Just you know, there was a chute coming down from the interior. Okay. Uh, the other uh, see the other question I had then was we were talking about the gate, the wrought iron gate, and being replaced with the wood gate. Two gates. Uh, two two questions on that. One is it identifies that wrought iron uh, as not being original being approximately 20 years old in the report. So the fact that it's now being replaced by another gate seems like, I'm not sure if, we'll let Cindy answer that in a moment. Um, and, and Jane probably was part of this, uh, but when the Stephen and Clarissa Cornwell owned the house, I know this house pretty well, they put the iron gate that goes across the driveway. That's, mm, I would guess, like 2001 or two or something, somewhere in there. That's probably, that's the gate that they want to replace. It's nothing, you know, historic about it. I believe that the pedestrian gate is an original feature. Um, I just don't know how it fits in because they did, the Cornwells did build the wall around the property in the 90s up to that gate, but that's an antique gate. So that's the only real question I have about that, this whole process is that antique gate in the front because it does line up with the fountain and it complements the design and it is, you know. You're speaking of the pedestrian gate? The pedestrian gate. Well, the, and the pedestrian gate's not proposed to be replaced? Oh, I understood you to say it was replaced with wood, but they're not. No, no, that's the, um, the vehicular access gate. Yeah, that gate? gate is just right. a regular old iron gate that they got the somewhere. Gate, yeah. That's the gate that's proposed to be replaced and, um, and staff did suggest that you consider yeah. um, whether or not that that should be wood, but but the but it's being it's not replacing um, a, a part of the landmark, the pedestrian gate is. But that's not being replaced, yeah. so that's good. 
Okay, and so, and so that answers the question I, I had. Uh, again, the gate being replaced is not historical. That's correct. It is, is attempting to uh, replace a gate that seems to be more in line with the other uh, more historic uh, houses that are in the Arbolata. The, other the only other question I had was that it requires a variance to have that gate in there because of the height, the report seemed to indicate. The vehicular gate? The, the, the wood gate, the one that apparently goes up and then going up exceeds the height limitations within the city. Chair Akins, I have to step back for a second and look at that. Um, and if it does require a variance, I'm going to have to look into that. Okay. Yeah, that, that was the only, I, I just wondered if that variance had been applied for and the, uh, the likely, it said that it would not take place until the uh, Historic Preservation Commission made their preferences known. So perhaps that's why it's not come to you. Yeah, I think mm. there, on the gate, um, the height, I believe there's some code modification I have to check because the Shamshuris have a gate that's higher than four feet on Foothill. The um, uh, 818, there's like five houses on Foothill that have gates that are higher than so four there, feet. So there are many, um, yeah. there, there are many, many gates. But they're new gates. I mean, these are pretty new gates. Like, well, it's possible that they were installed without the benefit of a permit. Um, uh, the, or, no, not or, the Libby House gate. I'm sure they had a permit. Or, or there was, um, where there was a, a, a variance, yeah. because if it's, um, or it's on, it's not on the front. No, it's on the front. Okay. I know these gates. <laughs> yeah, I'm okay. like all about gates, Mara. Okay, but, but yeah, that, that's great. I, I won't yeah. speak to them because I'm yeah. not aware. Thank you. No, so I, I'm just saying I think there's a um, something in the code about some. So Mara, that that section allowances, in, and we can ask Jane because that section is in her uh, write up under driveway gate. It's on page two of two of a attachment B. Okay, and then I will um, I will follow up um, through through the department regarding. Um, the um, requirement of a variance. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So that was my question. Uh, Thank you. What the likelihood was of it? So. And I've seen many gates. Is there a design? all over the Arbolata that are higher than the fences? Uh, Is a gate design? It talks about it in Jane's description. Where is it? Uh, right in here, driveway gate. Two of two on attachment B. Yeah, and I'm sure Jane, Jane will tell us about it. So those are the only, only questions that I had. I will pass it on to our vice chair, Convery, who. Um, I actually would like to hear from Jane Carroll about what we're talking about. I'm sure she has okay. all the answers. Well, do we have any other questions then for uh, from, staff from or? commissioners to staff? Uh, Gina, and then we'll move on. I just had a quick question. Um, Maura, you said something about there being a picture of the stove, and I didn't have that. Is that something that's in the packet, or is that, I just want to make sure I'm not missing anything. I'm going to look right now, because it should be in your packet. The stone is? The stove? The oh, the stove. The stove? The range? Stove? Yes, the range. While you're looking for that picture, I believe a stove just like that is in, you know, what we affectionately know as, as the Tarzan house. It was a recent yeah. landmarking. When I took the uh, tour of their property, Carrie Apple gave me a tour and showed me the stove that stays on all the time, 24-7, yeah. and big. The stove so. at 701, Bob and Thais put that stove in right before they got the Mills Act. It's not an antique, it's an right. AGA. I mean, I'm surprised that it's broken because it's a very expensive range, but it's definitely not an antique. They installed it. I talked to Thais two days ago. And just to check on a few other things, but yeah, the uh, none of the things that are being proposed in the kitchen are part of um, protected items. So right, I don't really, but I anyway, didn't care whether or not it was in the package. I just wanted to make sure I wasn't missing something. You are not missing something because I do not see it in the packet. Thank you. You're welcome. Yeah, I didn't see the stuff in there. Okay, Cindy, or Vice Chair Convery. Did uh, you have any other questions no. for interior? No, I don't. I only have for a few questions for uh, Jane Carroll. Okay. Any other questions for staff? Okay. Yep. 
If not, we'll close that section and we'll move on to uh, Jane. Would you uh, let her in, please, Brian? Um, hello. Uh, apologies for appearing prematurely earlier. Um, so well, I was welcome. involved with it. Can, can you hear me? Yes. I was in, I'm actually calling from England at the moment. <laughs> I was involved with this project uh, for the uh, restoration of the guest house, which was uh, permitted last year and was under construction at the time um, some of these interior changes were made, which um, provoked the uh, review of the Historic Preservation Commission. So I got involved with the house at that point. I also knew the house um, with the Cornwalls when they owned it a while ago. Just to make a few comments about what has been stated so far. The stove, which is a very lovely old um, English Arga stove, um, had a problem with one of the burners, but the main problem is that it is on 24 hours which is wonderful if you're in a cold English kitchen, but very obnoxious when you're in Southern California where you need to pump up the air conditioning. So it has not been removed yet. Um, they're frustrated because they don't have anything to cook on at the moment. Um, they will certainly be um, sending it on to a happier home in a colder clime. Once that gets, if that gets um, replaced, that changes the whole area of the kitchen counter, which means there has to be some restoration work of the cabinets and also that section of the countertop will have to come out. Um, so that dealt with that part of it too. Um, the next point I mentioned, yes, the upstairs hickory flooring is, is proposed to be dark wood wide plank um, to fit in with the rest of the house. The flooring on the deck is actually um, real wood, Ipe hardwood, floating. Um, it is behind the parapet wall. It can't be seen from outside. It's just because the deck surface at the moment is so hot. Um, they wanted something that wouldn't be so hot to bare feet to walk out on. Um, is there anything else you talked about? Yes, just to just to confirm, the walk-in gate is not going to be affected by this. That walk-in gate going into the formal front courtyard uh, will remain. They wanted to replace the driveway gate mainly for privacy. They had a small child that plays around in the driveway, mm -hmm. um, and it would be a traditional old wooden gate painted um, the color of the trim of the house, that pale blue green. Um, and we would be applying for a variance on that for the for the height, if it's a, a approved by the by the committee. I think that's everything that I had to talk about this. Yeah, Jane, can I ask? Um, I think you did the addition with Stephen Clarissa Cornwell in I, like two thousand. I did not do that addition. I I did not do that addition. Oh. Because the house was original and then they added on, you know, that bedroom wing. Correct. Um, but I believe that the next owner, after the Cornwells, the woman who bought it, changed the floors in the dining room, the kitchen, did an upstairs master suite, like basically changed a lot of the stuff in that house other than the living Correct. room. The living room, to me, looks like the only thing that's still original. I was Correct. in the house with Thais and Bob had it, and it, it's pretty, you know, it's different. So, Correct. Um, yeah, I just wanted to, I was a little concerned when I saw the hardwood floors upstairs, but then I remembered, oh, those are floors. You know, she completely reworked that whole scenario, Debbie Curry did. So yes, everything the, the is, yeah. floor plan and everything, yeah. Yeah, it's very strange. I mean, it's so, you know, you're just changing apples for apples. There's no historic changes going on, and you know, it doesn't affect the, the, the living room is really the only room that's kind of left as the original house. Correct. Uh, the dining room kind of, but the floor was, yeah. was taken out. It's yeah, true, the but they, is... they, they remodeled and rechanged the floor plan of the yeah. kitchen and the master bedroom. Yeah. And the floors and the, you know, those are not, 
the types of floors that one would have had at that time, certainly not in that house. You know, which so I was a little concerned about the hickory too because that's not a wood that was used at that time. But it doesn't matter because you're just changing it for a floor that was it's new anyway. Yeah, it's going to be stained very dark, yeah. um, which will be in keeping. Yeah, no, I think, I mean, the, my biggest worry was the pedestrian gate, and so I'm really happy to hear that that's staying, because I think that is a really nice feature on that house. It, oh, it's yes. character yes. defines the front. It's beautiful. Correct. So, Correct. Yeah, and I remember when Stephen put that metal gate in to keep their little kids. They're yes, only like six and, and that was time. slightly yeah. coming <laughs> off its rails as well, so... Yeah. They took that out, and and we're we're gonna just go ahead and put in a wooden one. And I went, you're gonna have to ask permission for this. Well, it's not the sh um, the Libby house has a gate similar to what you've described uh, in your description of the gate, which starts at four feet and comes up to probably I'm guessing six feet. I haven't measured it, but it's a wooden gate with cutouts and you know black large kind of medieval looking hinges it's you know it's a very beautiful gate and it's on a rock wall so it's very similar to what you're describing so i can't imagine that there would be an issue with putting that style on that house it's a perfect fit you know? I, I think so I, I think so yeah no i'm i'm happy with it as i said everything in the house that they're proposing to change nothing is historic that they're taking out or moving around and i've been in that house since 90, 1992, so. Yes, just, just one more point about the outdoor kitchen, which is really just wow. a barbecue area. Mm -hmm. That's uh, right beside the garage, which is also not historic, um, and the swimming pool. So it, it is a three foot high wall with a barbecue and an outdoor cold water sink in it. Um, and then the wall cool. extends around in an L-shaped with an outdoor fireplace. Will, will so it be it, facing it, it the kind pool? Of, I'm sorry? Will it be facing the pool? The garage no. and the pool sort of share that line? So it's it's the barbecue area is parallel to the east wall of the garage, south of the pool. Mm -hmm. um, and then the wall turns around at 90 degrees and the fireplace faces into a dining area by the barbecue and then also into the back entrance area of the dining room. Mm -hmm. I think nice. it's perfectly in keeping and it'll be the same wide wall that the, the garden walls everywhere that the Cornwalls put in, the wide walls yeah. with the rough plaster and color. Yeah, I don't think you can really even see that from the street. No, you can't. Yeah. Yeah, yeah no, it sounds really nice. I think it will all be in keeping when it's finished. I'm, I'm, that, that's that's the idea. Yeah, well, fortunately, you're the architect, so they're lucky. We care about the house yeah. enormously. It's a you beautiful know the house. house. Yeah, you're very, I think, that, you know, you're a very good choice for this project. Thank you. Um, other commissioner questions for Jane, for the applicant's representative? Uh, nope, Jenny was... Reaching for a oh no, I I um I don't have a question. I know that house very well as well, and um, I just am curious what happened to the other outdoor dining area. I mean, outdoor grill area is that gone? The old one. Yes, that that was huh. yeah, that was literally a, a wall around a barbecue uh, about five foot by three foot. Um, that's gone, and that's gone. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's that's I love that house. That was the first house I looked at in. Um, in Ohio. Yeah, it's a beautiful house. Yeah, it's great. Yeah, no, I think I think it sounds I think it sounds like the only thing that we would be considering is the wooden gate, right? That's the only thing really that's that's from the street that would be that would be affected, isn't it? The wooden gate. It's yeah. certainly the only thing you would see from the street. It's that, the only thing you would see. Yeah, it's the only thing that is seen from the street, but all of the things that um, are in the staff report are things that the plant that the uh, Historic Preservation Commission um, looks at and is are they are all discretionary. But again, in your report, you said that wouldn't then we're talking about the new wooden gate that 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 is uh, complementary or to the other whether it's there. in keeping or not with is what. Right. All, all of all of the items are discretionary. 
the, okay. the gate in particular, the applicant is saying is, um, and it sounds like it's been confirmed by a member of the HPC, is saying that it is in complete conformity with the style of the house. Yeah, yeah, I j just wanted to verify it. Um, Valerie, anything? I just read the report and it looked like the, it was really well, everything they're doing is really well done and it's all in keeping with historical principles and it doesn't conflict with any any of the things that we would find a conflict with. I think, you know, it was pretty simple to see that, yeah. Okay, great. Uh, Gina, questions? Yeah, I mean, I visited I visited the house when it was Thais's and uh, it's a beautiful home. It's just, I, I, I think they're doing a, they're doing, they're doing good work. I, I feel confident in this, uh, you know. <laughs> yeah, I also visited the house, even her, the colors she used to paint her driveway were the colors of that period. I mean, she did a really good job, Thais. Great, thank you. Uh, I guess the, only, the last question I have is the uh, plaque still around and is it mounted? There's the question. That's a good question. I don't know. I've never seen a plaque. I think it I was uh, on the <coughs> the main door coming in on the side. <laughs> uh, Gina showing yeah, us. Ah. It was a, it was attached um, to the outside of the living room at the time. I when I was visiting, I I, I photographed the house. So. Yep. So, Mar, do you think you could find out? What happened to the landmark plaque? I can look into that, and um, perhaps the property owner will be able to answer the question, and I, I can contact them, or perhaps Jane can. Okay. I will. I certainly will, yes. Okay, great. Thank you. Okay, uh, then we'll close that part. Uh, Brian, do we have public comment on this item? No, no public comments for it. Okay, then we will open and close public comments and we will open it up to the commissioners for, did you have something? Oh, okay, sorry, thought I hand, saw a hand moving. Okay, we will open it up to commissioners for discussion and any action they wish to pursue. Um, comments? I would like to approve the work permit. I don't have any other comments because I think it's all in keeping. Is that what you mean? Oh, uh, yeah, just uh, anybody has any last comments? Uh, any last comments before we take action? I'll make a motion. I'd just, like to, I, I would just like to say it's always good when we see one of our landmark homes get into the hands of someone who really understands and appreciates the, um, you know, that the house and, and the significance of it. So. I'm grateful that they found it, uh, that Thais found a, someone else to carry it on. Great, thank you. Uh, Vice Chair Combrey, yes. I'll make a motion. Um, I'd like a make, to make a motion that we recommend the changes proposed along with the, get the variance on the gate height to six feet, the swinging gate at the driveway. Okay, and we have a second? I'll second. Oh. Yeah. Okay, so we have a, a motion and a second. Brian, would you call the roll please? Akins? Yes. Convery? Yes. James? Yes. McHatton? Yes. And Freeboard? Yes. Okay, we will move on to uh, item number four. This is the annual Historic Preservation Award. Um, staff report, Mara? At this time, um, the commissioners can discuss and, and put out their people that they um, would like to nominate. And then before we finish with it, I would like to find out who will be writing the bios for the people that you're nominating. Okay, thank you. Uh, I would like to lead off. So again, we're talking about uh, a annual award and a lifetime uh, achievement award recognition by the council. Uh, for my annual award, I would like to nominate uh, Commissioner Gina McCatton for all of her work she did over the last two years in putting together uh, the ad hoc committees in keeping it organized and then in, in a manner that it is presentable and uh, accessible uh, and perhaps most importantly with the video that was put forth that uh, was presented to the uh, joint city council meeting and that I'm currently using and sending to uh, every parcel owner that I contact. So I would like to 
nominate Gina for the annual award. For the Lifetime Achievement Award, I would like to uh, nominate Tony Thatcher. Uh, I've known Tony Thatcher. I know he is from the museum standpoint. He was on the museum board probably multiple times. His wife has been on the museum board. Uh, he has been very supportive. He continues to be on our finance committee. I know he and the Friends Ranch uh, support most many, many organizations throughout the community. He, of course, has the uh, Thatcher name. The founder of that was, I believe, his grandfather. So he carries that heritage with him, and he, uh, he, he wears it well, and uh, he supports everything historic. And I looked through all of the people that had been recognized uh, for both an uh, annual award and a lifetime achievement award, and Thatcher was not a name that was on it. And so I think it is a time to recognize uh, Tony Thatcher as that representative of the Thatcher and, and also the uh, friend. Uh, his, his wife is Anne Friend, and so in that joint, uh, in that wonderful marriage, they uh, um, bring forward those two uh, pioneer families. So other nominations. Um, I don't have an annual nomination, but I do have a lifetime achievement nomination I want to put forth. Uh, Ron Polito was, I can't call him a developer because he had several different positions. And he, he's from Ventura. He's been, you know, he was here his whole life. He unfortunately died of COVID about a year ago, which was a complete shock. He was incredibly healthy. He, when I lived here, Ron got the Bank of America building, which was like a 60s building right on Ojai Avenue next to the park. It's where, um, I don't know what buildings are in there now. It used to be Nomad Gallery, but it was just this eyesore, and he made that Spanish-style business center there, and he did it, you know, he did it the right way. He got the right materials. He used the really right tile, and he didn't have to be told what to do or fight with the city because he wanted to do something that was inappropriate. He did the right thing by Ojai to elevate our historic downtown in keeping with the entire look. Then he went down to where the Ojai Business Center is. There was another super rundown building there. That corner was just pretty dilapidated. And he created the business center and Jim and Rob's in the same style, using quality materials and doing the right thing, the right height. He didn't try to make it higher to make more money. You know, he just did the right thing. And he really made, with those two really dreadful buildings gone, Ron made our downtown corridor cohesive. Like, you know, he and Alan Raines kind of single-handedly kept our downtown status quo from the 90s on and I was wanting to nominate Ron and he unfortunately got COVID and passed away so I would like to consider him posthumously for a lifetime achievement award for doing the right thing as a new developer and we've lately seen some developers who maybe question mark don't want to do exactly the right thing by our historic buildings so it's really nice to have Ron Polito considered because he went really out of his way to do the right thing. That's my nomination. Great, thank you. Uh, thank you, Cindy. Uh, just one quick thing while I have some time. So, uh, Mara, for uh, Gina and for Tony, items number one, three, four, five, six. Are the qualifications on the next page? Thank you, Cindy. Yes. For their criteria, it says. Okay. Yes. Oh, should, can I nominate someone? Of course. Okay. I just wanted to nominate Brian Akins for lifetime achievement. I don't know if I, if you qualify because you haven't done any buildings, <laughs> but. <laughs> I, I, I appreciate the effort, but I plan on sticking around for a long time, so don't wait for me. Oh, okay. I didn't realize it had. Okay, then. Well, I don't have anybody because I couldn't find anybody else. Oh, well, thank you. Appreciate that. Yeah, I plan on staying for a little bit. So, in other words, that's when you retire or something. You get that. I would think so. Okay. It's 
kind of like an emeritus award. Oh, yeah, okay. <laughs> I, I think, I don't know. Um, I think you can make it whatever you want. Other than that, I, there's, everybody seems like they have an award already, except Ron Polito and Tony Thatcher yeah. and Gina. <laughs> um, Gina, Jenny, uh, I did. I like the idea of Gina. I think that's a great idea. And I think that, <laughs> I think Ron Polito and Gina together would make a big statement about the historic downtown corridor and you know what, what we're trying to achieve there. And I'm just curious if that question about do you need to do a building was was that is that a true thing? What, your question about you have to do a building to be nominated is that true? That's not true. No, that's only one. No. Of the yeah, page one of one attachment A has a list of the qualifications, but yeah, but no, I just I just was curious that that was mentioned, but no, um, I think Ron Polito's you know great. I mean, I don't think if Ron Polito was still alive we he he wasn't very old right i mean but yeah. um i think it's a really you know a really great thing to do since he's not with us anymore that was a big shock um but our, i want to discuss both tony thatcher and ron because tony thatcher's a fantastic choice and you know last year we chose alan rains and he didn't you know he was he didn't make it very far after the award, passed away. So I want to consider Tony is not getting any younger too. So those are two like really valuable choices. And I, you know, let's talk about what it means to have possibly two lifetime achievement awards. Is that a conflict? Does it one take yeah. energy from the other? What do you guys think? No. I think the Ron. I, mean, I think Ron with Gina makes a lot of sense. And you know. The year that we did Craig for Lifetime, um, we also had, who was it? Was it Rose? So we had somebody with Craig no, for Lifetime. No, we, did, we did Cricket Twitchell and Ellen Ray. Cricket, yeah, oh, okay. Cricket I know that we've done oh. two Lifetime at the same time. And thank you very much for nominating me. That was very, very yeah. nice. I, I have um, future nominations. I'm really hoping that next year, the year after we're nominating the um, the people at El Roblar and the owners of the theater for the amazing thing that they're going to do. So those are my future. That's what I'm looking ahead. So a couple of years from now, I really, I'm hoping that they are going to do what we, what we are hoping they're going to do. Yeah, let's see how that goes. Um, but but um, Jenny, Ron Polito, I talked to his family. I talked to Judy. She was thrilled. You know, she just thought it was a wonderful thing. And I think putting Ron together with Tony Thatcher, both having this award would really mean a lot to his, the Polito family. You know, because Ron, uh, he grew up in Ventura, point. but he was lived in Ojai for a very, you know, 40 years or something. And his kids grew up here in Tony's Ojai, you know. And I think that would really mean a lot to the Polito family to have Ron associated with Tony in the award department. Uh, any other nominations then? No, we have done two lifetime at the same time before. I'm, I'm correct, right? Yeah, we did last year. Okay. Cricket Twitch on Ellen Rains. So yes, um, and and I, I, you know, I didn't look beforehand, but I'm sure there have been. I'm guessing there have been beforehand. We have the list in our packet. Okay. Yes. So uh, then, do we have a motion to uh, move ahead with those? Or do we make a nomination? What would you like, Mara? Do we want a motion on that or consensus or? Just a second. I believe we do want a motion. To, okay. um, sorry, just a second. Um, identify the candidates and assign commissioners to prepare biographies. I'm not going to assign you. I'd like you to tell me who's gonna do them. And then um, at the next HPC meeting, we will nominate and make a motion to adopt a resolution recommending City Council ratify the recipient. Okay. So we're just putting the ideas out right now. Yes. And then we will uh, get the background information and then make a final decision next time. Yes. So, sense. so Chair Eakins, who will be making the um, biographies? Who will be making the... 
the uh, doing the information, the background. Yeah, who will be providing the biographies? Okay, well, I will definitely do Tony Thatcher, having done an oral history interview on both Tony and his wife, but I'll talk with uh, him personally. I'll do Ron. Okay, and uh, Cindy will do Ron, and I am happy to do Gina also since. We could, I could, I could do Gina with Gina. That would be wonderful. <laughs> I could interview Gina to know what I we should be writing. Uh, I, I think that, that would be wonderful. So, um, yeah. Chair Akins will do, be preparing the biography on Tony. Uh, mm -hmm. Jenny will be, um, excuse me, Commissioner Prebor will be um, preparing the bio on Gina, um, Commissioner McCatton, and. Commissioner Convery will be preparing the bio on Ron Polito. Yes? Yes. Yes. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, we will move on to, I think we're on item number five. Is that correct? Yes. Okay, item That's number correct. five, uh, update. Um, So, so along this line, uh, at, our, at our last meeting, we had proposed to the city council uh, three different things that were aligned with the downtown historic district. Uh, one of those was, um, I th sat through this six hour, I'm still recovering from the six plus hour meeting the other night. Um, one was to, uh, on the Mills Act, uh, to, um, basically allowed the Mills Act uh, to go forward without doing, uh, these are uh, things we were proposing to the City Council and they were going to discuss them this last Tuesday night, but uh, I actually got there a little after five o'clock and by 5.15, uh, Mr. Summers and I and had already deduced that uh, arts item was not gonna be heard that night. Uh, the item on the uh, development agreement uh, went four plus hours, I think, just on public comments, and uh, it was settled uh, somewhere just after 11 o'clock. 11 o'clock to me on a council meeting means that I'm not eating at McDonald's on the way home that night. Um, so um, so our, our items, the three different items, one was to have a joint meeting with the Planning Commission. That was on there. These, these items were relayed to, to Mara, and then uh, she worked with, I'm guessing, uh, Lucas and James uh, and put it on uh, the City Council agenda for this last week, or, or last Tuesday night. That item has now been uh, moved until the one and only council meeting in August, which is the 14th. Is that when it is? Second Tuesday in August, sorry. Then that would be the 14th, yes. Okay, so uh, our item has been moved to that. So it was uh, having a joint meeting with the Planning Commission and that was to try to find work with them in uh, easing the regulations for the downtown area. The other one was to uh, for a code change for uh, uh, getting the code to recognize that uh, the contributing properties in the downtown, the, our local proposed local downtown historic district would not need a historical resources report. We're gonna That's get to good. that. We're gonna get to that little nugget briefly in just a minute. And then the uh, first one was, my mind's blown, do you remember? It's. About costs or something, no. Uh, the reduction of fees, the, um, the, oh, what was the third one? Why can't I? Meeting with the planning, the reduction of fees, and the Mills Act change. So it was meeting with planning. Making contrib contributing buildings, Mills Act clause. Yeah, yeah, so the first thing was exempting for, exempt from processing fees in the Mills Act. Uh, the second, oh, the second one was looking at uh, concerns of the property owners in the processes downtown. And, you know, the, and it talks about the different overlays that are involved that we've talked about. And then the third one was to take the next step and meet with the planning commission in trying to uh, work with them in getting uh, uh, fees removed. 
well, in getting the uh, regulations. Uh, because regulations, we, we have our input in that, but that requires the Planning Commission also. So those were the three things. Again, those three, three things were, uh, that was postponed about halfway through the meeting uh, to, the, to the August meeting, and will be on the agenda then. Um, so Mara, Mara, Mara. <laughs> Uh, we have a little bit of a glitch, and I'm just going to uh, just um, I one of the things that's that's been discovered and um, is the fact that uh, deals with the state historic district and the requirements that it puts upon the properties that are within the state historic district. And so what we had been understanding is that um, that we could uh, apply to the council to change the language and therefore eliminate the need for um, historic resources report for the contributing properties in between. So uh, right at the moment, that is there's a little bit of a question in that. Uh, well, there's, there's some clarity in that, but we are trying to understand exactly what that means. And so, uh, so that is a process that will take forward going forward. Gina has her hand. She is working with, well, I'll let you tell, tell Gina, go ahead and tell us what. Uh, I, okay, so. Uh, well, let, let me just preface. So Gina is a part of the original ad hoc committee where we discussed that. So Gina is the only one of our five members that I have discussed this with, just for the people that are outside wondering how, uh, how he's tiptoeing all over the Brown Act. So I have only talked with Gina about that outside of this meeting. And Gina then has fortunately some insight that she's bringing. Gina? Yeah, so um, I am taking a um, July, Thursdays in July with the California Historic Preservation Foundation um, CEQA classes to really understand this more. And I had a class today and I spoke with the, um, the field director there and I went over everything with him. I, we went over the Caltrans document and the subsequent letters. And he says that um, there's no need to reevaluate properties that have already been evaluated that have, out of all the different things that you can get as far as with preservation that um, the lowest bar to, to, to hit the num the things that you would have to hit is the Mills Act and that you just need to be a local resource, um, acknowledged local resource as a contributor um, to our local historic district, whether or not it's the state or not. He says that would not matter that if our code said that it was um, a our local resource, that that would be sufficient and it would be sufficient if, um, I mean, if we change this code, this code is only going to work if we have a local district. So it's almost like what is the chicken or the egg kind of thing, because um, we need to change this code so we can tell um, property owners that this would be available to them. But if this doesn't pass as a local district, that code doesn't do anything because none, none of the contributors are part of a local district. It would be our, um, our ordinances that would, um, what would, would matter. And he said that, um, that it would, that it's acknowledged as a state historic, uh, district and each property has a, um, part of this, this, um, as contributing properties that, um, he, he can't see why it, it would not be. Of course, I'm not going to stop with him. He's also, reading up on more and I'm going to meet talk with him again. And I'm also, um, he's reaching out to people at, um, Chippo at uh, the California Historic Preservation Office as well. And so will I to just make sure that we are being really transparent and that we are able to, um, have this be as a benefit. I, I don't think it's going to be a problem and either does the field director, John, um, Haber. So I will follow up and keep everybody informed but i don't at this point i don't think we need to change any of our 30 questions 
or anything that we're telling people because this seems, I mean, it's, this is, like you said, sequel law is constantly changing and this seems to be the most current information. So I feel confident, but I'm, I'm not 100%. So I'd like to just keep it rolling until we have more information. I'll bring more information to the next meeting. Great. Thank you, Gina. Uh, we still walking the fine line there, Maura? And Effie? <laughs> yes, you're still discussing um, the ad hoc um, progress. We are. The ad hoc committee progress, sure. Okay, great. Uh, and just so people know, again, if you look at our, the, our, the map that we have, and you look at the, you can tell what part is the state part because it's outlined with the blue outline, as opposed to our total downtown historic district, we are only talking about the part that's within the state his, his, uh, historic district boundaries. So it doesn't include our, everything that we're proposing, okay. that, that we're just, and so I appreciate, appreciate uh, feedback very much, Gina. The other thing to keep in mind that we're kind of in this uh, a bit weird of a position because we as the HPC are the ones that are proposing the downtown historic district, not the city of Ojai. So we have that unique position that we are going out to, uh, we, the ad hoc committee, are going out to the parcel owners as members of the Historic Prison, uh, Preservation Commission. Uh, and so our going out then to uh, try to get information is just us again as that unique party to try to find information. And then we would bring that back in. Lucas, I know also uh, is uh, keeping this in mind and talking to people. I did get a copy of the uh, letter that he received from the state uh, back in October kind of explaining this. But this is something that just came uh, to my attention when I looked at the write-up for uh, our item for the uh, city council Tuesday night <laughs> and called somebody and said, <laughs> so. I think that's one of the, the problems with all of this is there's so much interpretation and um, you know, it's, it really does. I mean, when you um, have a, a state or a federal landmark, um, there's protections, but there's nothing that's going to give you the oversight like a, a local district. And I think that's why um, CEQA and that's why um, the preservation office they, for the state really looks to the, um, the local city council and commissions to write that um, code and make sure that they, that they do it through your, your local ordinances because that's, that's where it really, that's where the oversight is. As they said in today's class, there is no CEQA police. So it relies on a lot of people um, doing their job and on the local level and, and making sure that everything happens correctly. But, you know, so, so that's, uh, that's where we're at right now. And, and tell us about your instructor that's been uh, doing CEQA for how many decades and still <laughs> is a bit confused by it all. <laughs> yeah, it's just, it's, it's incredible um, that I really felt like I was in um, like a, a law class today. It was just very, very dense. Luckily, they they record them all. And part of the charge for going to the classes is that you can watch them over and over again. So I'm glad that I can review it because it's just a lot of information. But I think that out of all the things that I've been able to learn about in the last couple of years, um, SQL is one of the things that just kind of, it was more of a, yeah, that, that thing, SQL, but I didn't really understand exactly how it all fit in and i understand that much better now so i'm i'm grateful well, great thank you uh, gina and then i looked down at my notes and the third item that we were talking about at city council was the fact that the city of ojai actually owns seven parcels <laughs> that's it within our downtown historic district six of which are landmarks uh the, which means they get one vote and we talked about this at the last meeting in that vote they can they can uh, support, they can not support, or they can remain neutral at the moment. And uh, have you? But isn't have you? Also, isn't a lot of what they? I'm sorry. I thought that we included the parking lots, but we didn't, so that makes more sense. Okay, never mind. That might be the seventh one. That might that I think that might no the pergola. I think is the only one that's not called out as landmark. Uh, I don't know if you've seen the ballot, but the ballot is very simple. 
um, yeah, I don't. That's it's a public document, so uh, it, it's very simple. Very so that was the third thing we uh, we were asking the council if they would vote. Okay, um, anything else on item number on that item? Moving forward. Again, thank you for doing the class at Gina. That's fabulous. Uh, what are we? Are we on? We're on number six. Number six, future agenda items. We'll flip back to. Um, uh, Brian, could, yes, could I'm you, sorry. Are we doing an update? Was that just an update on the historic district, or was that the ad hoc committee update? Uh, that was kind of uh, an update. So, are we supposed to talk about um, people or property owners we've just talked to this week or the last couple weeks, or not? Oh uh, no. Well, we haven't been doing that. Um, yeah, well, giving the giving the question and the yeah, questions. Yeah, you're welcome to ask uh, to share. I'm sorry. Yeah, I, well. Share what you like. I, I just wanted to say that I've talked to. Um, well, the, the ad hoc's closed, yeah, so now okay. we're to the commissioner's comments on that. Okay. Our ad hoc's still open. That ad hoc's. I don't know moved. what's happening. <laughs> Mine and Gina, we closed. Would you Here's like mine. me to comment about any of the property owners that I've interacted with about the historic district? Or shall I save it for another day? No. I, I would like I'm a um, Brian. Well, I need to ask Brian. Uh, um, okay. uh, yeah, if it's not too long, I'm just still looking no, at that. I know. Oh, you, but, I, but I don't want to take up the time. No, I just you're not. If it was part I, of the I would thing. like to get uh, just kind of a, a general feel okay. from you on what you're hearing from the people that you're okay. contacting. And I'll give just, you know, a couple minute remarks. Okay, just briefly, you know, I talked to Jeff Rains and answered some questions. I prepared the, printed out the 30 questions or whatever number it is, the map and the ballot. Um, I went into Wachter's and left them for Katie. You know, just some people I know. I went to the dry cleaner. I gave them to porch, gallery, and, you know, just walking around the city, getting a really positive reaction from everyone. And from, for instance, Michelle, who owns the dry cleaner, she wasn't really aware of it, not, you know, doesn't watch city council meetings. And so she was really happy to get the information and had some questions. So most people are very open to it. There's not a lot of negativity unless maybe that's from out of town people. David Trudeau, who's a property owner in town, you know, he just wanted to know what I thought because he's known me for a long time. So he, they're very uh, respectful about the fact that Brian is very knowledgeable and has been here and that we're all involved. Most of the people who own property in town who live in Ojai are very respectful of the work we're doing. So I just wanted to um, let you guys know that that was the that was the information that I'm getting from people. I'm not getting a lot of negativity. So that's my update. Great, great, thank you. Um, the, I'm not contacting a lot of people I know, but I am contacting a lot of the parcel owners. Uh, the people I'm perhaps seeing the most are the boards. Uh, at seven o'clock tonight, I'm going before the uh, uh, Art Center board. Uh, generally what I do is I call somebody uh, when I've talked to them, then I uh, send them a packet of information which has a cover sheet and then the uh, the cover of the uh, Caltrans report, the map, the, the, uh, this map, uh, uh, different things to them. They, uh, if they have a board, uh, they dis uh, distribute that. The board usually uh, lets me come and make an introduction and then I come back a month or two later depending on when their next board meeting and do a presentation which is what I'll do tonight. I haven't been to Art Center before just for a timing issue but they do have the packet um, I talk to and people have questions uh, at the beginning, but uh, people were overwhelmingly positive when I went to twice sold tales. Uh, we did have some frank discussions. Um, and then, you know, people are, can, what are the benefits of this? First question I usually get, what are the benefits uh, to us, to our organization? And so, uh, but yeah, no. They give me a period of time and then I uh, answer questions and uh, I'm looking forward to going back to and, six, and six boards so far. And you had, Brian, some interaction about why is this taking so long? 
right? Oh. Correct? So I would just like to mention and during our meeting that we are waiting for the city council, the agenda item that was pushed because of the cottages and the Mallory Way four hour long discussion. So we are sort of at the mercy of things that are outside of our control, one of which being this agenda item being dealt with with the city council. Absolutely, the, uh, these were three important things that we hope to have resolved by, uh, by the city this last Tuesday night. A and again, we understand, uh, I, you know, it was a, to us it's a big item, to us it, it is important, and people get that sense. I mean, uh, you know, they, they see uh, in, uh, you know, I, I don't think, I think like for Cindy, that she's a vice chair, you know, I don't know how important it is because everybody knows who Cindy is. You know, she's a very, uh, you're going and seeing people you know for the most part. Um, me, I'm not going and seeing people I know. So if I call and I say, hey, I'm the chair of the Historic Preservation Commission, I think I get a little more attention than, you know, hey, I'm just calling because I wanted to, to share with you. So um, I, I think people are, are positive. I. Um, it's a good thing we do not have a time frame. One of the boards I'm meeting with, trying to meet with, is uh, on a two-month two hiatus. And, you know, people are out on vacation. I was on vacation, so, yeah. But, I mean, people are not antagonistic. And, and in the meantime, we're trying to solve questions that they have in real time. Uh, Mara knows that, you know, if I get any questions, I relay those questions to Mara and to Lucas. Uh, so that they there we can get answers to them have them get answers to them or so that they, they can be aware of what's going on with the community and that was part of what we were addressing with the city council some of the community concerns and so you know part of meeting with the council was that I can now say hey w we have a, an agenda I, three agenda items before the council and you know so they know that we're making progress not just blowing smoke we good Good update. Oh, thank you, thank you, <laughs> thank you, Cindy. I appreciate that. Okay, we're on uh, future agenda items. Preserve, preserve, preserve. Oh, hi day, October fifteenth. Yep. Yes, and at our next meeting, um, we should be talking more about the um, or we getting the bio biographies from you. Yeah. Yes. The, um, for the nominations. Yes. Or, awards 11. nominations. Uh, 14th, um, so, right? Um, I have August, August 11th. 11th, okay, thank um, you. I'd like to add uh, requesting that the sites of merit, structures of merit for the cottages, uh, cottages of the flowers and the uh, Mallory Way project that we could propose that to the city council during our next meeting. And I would like to see that too. There, there are the HSOM, Historic Structures of Merit, I think is what the code oh. calls it. I don't, Craig called it Structures of Merit, I don't know. But let's, uh, I, there, let's there's put There's a lot of different on. names, but yeah. yeah. If we could add that to the uh, agenda August 11th, I think that's like a very timely. Yeah, a lot of people are very passionate, just in the business center. Yeah. They were putting out their trees and all that. Um, yeah. So yeah. cottages, say that, I'm sorry. Called the cottages of the flowers. Co okay, yeah, right. cottages among the flowers. And the Mallory Way. And Mallory, Mallory Way, Way cottage or Thank you. bungalows. Bungalows. Thank you. Is so we'll propose them for historic structures of merit. Okay. Uh, anything else that we want uh, on future agenda items, Jenny? I'd like to add the process for um, getting a sign approved. Okay. Just, uh, just if, if we could have a discussion about that, please. So you want to have a report from staff? Um, no, I want to have I want to have a discussion. I want to have a discussion about that process, and um, you can do a report from staff, but I don't think that's really necessary. I think we have to start with just having a discussion and including staff in that discussion about how how that is going and you know i have some feedback from merchants and i just feel like it's something that i know that these meetings are not really so much about discussing but i think that that needs to be uh discussed so it sounds like just for everyone's information on the historic preservation commission and also the public that might be watching 
what and I, let me know if I'm interpreting. Oh, this correctly. right. Let, that's me, that's if also I, if yeah, I'm, if right. I'm, that's if I'm well, if I'm interpreting um, this correctly, that you would want staff to go over the process for historic um, or for signs in the downtown and or sorry, it wouldn't be the downtown um, on historic buildings. And then, well, why don't we do that? That's a good idea. Like to that's good. Avenue in the arcade. Okay, so or, yeah. If, yeah. if there's if 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 you believe that it should begin with a description for the public about what the process of signage on historic buildings is, and then that could follow with a discussion about that. Is that what you are suggesting? I'm just trying to um, formalize it in some way. Uh, it, as to how it's going to be f formally p put on the agenda and presented. Is it going to be presented to the commission so you actually have something to discuss? Because not everyone may be familiar with the process, and again, especially the public. So I'm, I, I like that idea because I think I think that the I think that we need. Um, I think that's a good point that not everyone may be familiar with it. And I think because we have so many new um, merchants and businesses and, you know, people that don't, you know, probably have no idea what the process is. So I, I like that idea. Yes. Okay. Yeah. No, I think I, 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 and I have not uh, talked to anybody in their arcade other than the board of realtors. I've met with them. So I have not heard the um, the arcade people's concerns other than what has been shared with me on the board of realtors. So I think an understanding. I'd I'd like to understand. I think it's all I think it's all historic buildings though, right? Because Rory's place had to go through um, a process to get her signage approved, every, and that's not every, in the arcade. Every sign in the city um, is. Is required to go through a process if it's on a historic building then it's required to come before the HPC okay and okay what I'd like to do is to write this down as a future as a request for a future agenda item discussion item uh -huh. and if it's appropriate to put it on the next agenda it will be put on the next agenda if it's appropriate to put it on this list of future items and it's not able to go on the next agenda I'd like that I just like to state that I that it, it'll go on the future agenda list, and if it can be on the next agenda, it will. So, so in in our group, in our commission, we can only discuss what the procedure is to request signage on um, a historically designated building. Correct. And the arcade. The arcade is all designated. Well, the arcade, but there's also other. I mean, you know, the arcade would be included in that, right? Yeah. I don't know yeah. why is the board of is the board of realtors an historic building? Uh, no, they're not. But they they represent people. They place people in uh, at renters in the arcade, and so that's why they brought it up. Because oh oh, I see. Oh, well, maybe maybe of, that maybe we're talking about the same thing here. Maybe that's part of you know um, trying to inform people that are taking spaces about what the procedure really is. Okay, so maybe, maybe we're maybe we're talking about the a little bit about the same thing, right? Yeah, I definitely I would definitely like to have an understanding of that. And you okay. know, I started it to degree, yeah. but it is noted to be on a future agenda as a, as a discussion okay. item and a presentation yes. by staff as to what the current regulations are or requirements. That's perfect. Great. Perfect. Thank you. I mean, I thank you. I ideally, one more thing. I, ideally, it would be so nice just to have like a one sheet. Welcome to the arcade welcome to a historic this is what you have to do just you know because jenny if you don't know and you've been a commissioner for a year now nobody knows i always think about that if there's something that i don't know no one knows it so, <laughs> so well, i've also it, i've also had my space you know for almost 10 years yes. okay so call your yeah. call your city planner and um i definitely have a couple <laughs> things on agenda item number six so no the rest of six in the planning reports i uh, uh, okay, on oh, on the planning report. Okay, yeah. So, uh, future agenda items. We have some things to that are being added for that. Yeah, so, two two things. The um, to have the cottages and Mallory. Um, oh. I'm Mallory yeah, thank you. Added um, to the historic sites of merit discussion. Right to discussion. the to the city council. Okay. 
Yes. And then the, the signs on historic buildings. Yes. And then I have two, are there any other future agenda items? I don't think so. Okay. I have two other things to talk about. And one is um, we don't have Epi anymore this evening. He had to take off, but I can start. And if there are any questions, we can bring this back up again at our next meeting. But in the meantime, um, regarding, regarding AB 361, and that is uh, what came up earlier tonight about being present at the meetings as opposed to being virtual. Um, so this is an update basically on attendance. AB 361 related to virtual meetings due to COVID. And the city council did not renew that. So that means that we're back to the normal Brown Act procedures, which require that all commissioners and all bodies, um, not just the HPC, that they actually be at the meeting and not be attending virtually anymore unless there are, um, uh, I forget the word I was using before, thank you, extenuating circumstances. And then there are specific guidelines for that. And I don't have those specific guidelines at the moment and I was gonna hand that over to Epi tonight, but we, we will follow through with them and, and let you know if you're not able to attend a meeting, you're gonna contact staff and probably Sherry or Brian, and then you're gonna be um, guided as to what the procedures are that we have to do or that perhaps one of the, the commissioner themselves has to do. Um, but I, I, can, I have to end it there because I don't have those procedures in front of me. Is Effie in the same office as Matt? Yes. Oh, okay, good, yeah. okay. And I think he just took off to get on an airplane. Seriously, seems, seems to be like the e thing to everyone, do. right, I'm waiting until tomorrow morning. Okay, and so the, up, the other thing I wanted to update you on is um, the city council hearing from uh, Tuesday, Tuesday night um, regarding the Becker Development Agreement. And I'm going to be reading to you from um, a, a, uh, basically a statement from, um, from Lucas. So at the Tuesday night's city council hearing, the proposed Becker Development Agreement consisting of 65 units, 20 moderate units and five low units, that be income, um, spread over four different sites, was discussed with public comment, including over 100 people providing input, some expressing support for affordable housing and the vast majority expressing significant concern that the project is not doing enough for affordable housing and questioning the use of the development agreement as the appropriate tool to achieve the matter. At this meeting, concerns such as parking, trees, water, appropriate process and procedures being followed, environmental work, and affordable housing were brought forward to council and the community. After about five hours of public comment and two intermissions, the proposed development agreement was brought back to the council for deliberation. Ultimately, after three motions were put on the table, the council voted three to two, that's Wyrick, Blatz, and Haney in favor, and Mayor Sticks and Francina opposed to send this back to the ad hoc committee consisting of council members Blatz and Wyrick before further negotiations with the developer. The matter would be brought back to the full council at a later date and a um, noticed and also, excuse me, noticed for public input and feedback on the matter. And so that's your update just in case there are um, questions uh, regarding Tuesday night's meeting regarding the Becker Development Agreement. Okay, great, thank you, Mara. Um, as I mentioned, I was at that meeting from um, before it started to when it finally, uh, they took the final vote after a motion and two substitution motions. Um, and, and I don't really wanna go into too much other than to say that there was a lot of discussion by the uh, those that were sharing their comments on in their mind, uh, the historical nature of the uh, Mallory bungalows and the cottage among the flowers. Um, we, there have been, I will tell you that, and we talked about this at the last meeting, there have been, there were uh, three historic resources reports at least um, on these two entities, but they were 2006, 2008, 2009. They were reviewed by the Historic Preservation Commission back then. Uh, I do not have the minutes on that. Uh, again, this was discussed 
Um, it came back to, as Mara said, it eventually came back to the council. They referred it back to the ad hoc committee meeting to make uh, refinements, perhaps in the existing uh, um, agreement uh, through that ad hoc committee meeting. Uh, will those refinements uh, bring it back to the Historic Preservation Commission meeting? Uh, we, we have no idea. We don't know. Again, that is done by the Historic Preservation Commission. Uh, so those are just my brief comments. Uh, but uh, our vice chair happened to be sitting next to me. I know that because I saved her seat. <laughs> and uh, so I wanted to give Cindy an opportunity because she had her was sitting next to me through most of that meeting and has her insight too. So they are uh, the both properties. No, I'm not talking about the four projects: World, World University and Montgomery Street, just Mallory and Cottages, qualify for the National and California Historic Registers, um, and we need to put them on the historic sites of merit. I since they are historic. And since the reports were submitted and they came to this commission in 2006 and 2009, in 2016, the, plan, the development company submitted proposed uh, changes to their development to the planning commission and the planning commission reviewed it. It should have come back to HPC at that time. Because they're historic structures, whenever there are changes to the plans, it needs to come here. It didn't. So at Excuse that me. time, yeah. I'm sorry. I just want to make sure that um, that we're following the Brown Act, I, oh. and, I, and I'm not sure. I just no. Want I'm just talking so about my comments on city council. Right. I think I that um, I think that I'm pretty sure that we're not supposed to be talking about our our like our opinions and our um, our thoughts. Just reporting on what happened at the meeting. That I just want to make what sure. I commented. These are my comments. Oh, these were your the comments meeting. at the meeting. Okay. Yeah. I apologize. No, Thank no you. worries because I get very emotional. Yeah. So these but, were yeah. Cindy's comments as an individual and she my clearly comments. made it. Excellent. Thank you. And now well, we, and that's clarified now yeah, for the clearly, meeting too. Clearly Thank made you. those comments as an individual. And yeah. so my asking her to report uh, is because she was sitting there next to me as an in individual. Thanks for clarification. Yeah, no, no, excellent question. So that, uh, yeah, this, again. The end of my comment was that the municipal code requires that these projects come back to us since the plans have been changed since the initial approval in 2009, which apparently got an extension without historic preservation's input. So that was my comment during city council to point out that there is a code violation if they don't come back to us. Great. <laughs> Great. Thank you, Cindy. So again, that's all of the discussion that we will take place on, uh, as regards to Tuesday night because, again, we're just reporting on what took place uh, Tuesday night. Uh, I will tell you that I did uh, scan through the 314-page document. Heavens to Betsy. And uh, 12 times. I could have done a search, but I wanted to flip through it. So about 12 different times, the Historic Preservation Commission or the uh, Ojai Valley Museum were mentioned uh, in that 314 pages. So I was just trying to see what our involvement was in the report. Mm -hmm. So, okay. Uh, let's see, AP 369, verbal comments from commissioners. Uh, do we have anything else we need to bring up at the commission? Today? Yeah, tonight. Oh, tonight? No. No? Okay, are we ready to close? Woo, and get to our 7 o'clock meetings? Okay, wish me luck uh, with the Art Center. Thank you. Thank you all. Good luck, Brian. Thank, Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you all. I love working.